The Lorna M. Johnson Global Institute is rooted in equality and justice. We are committed to exploring innovative, non-traditional modalities and approaches to positively shift cultural norms relating to bias, hate, and disparities. Thank you for joining us today as we discuss the fierce urgency of this moment, a great moment for healing communications and bridging the divides within race, culture, faith, media, and politics. We must be the change we seek. Let's follow the compass of love for one another. Open our hearts and inspire the best in each of us, eliminating the virus of bigotry and confusion. Responding to the call of our moral compass for a more perfect union, I ask each and every one of you to join me in bridging the divide by sharing your bridge building ideas through the Lorna M. Johnson Global Institute Town Hall. The future is in our hands. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are around the globe. Welcome to the Lorna M. Johnson Global Institute Virtual Town Hall. Thank you for tuning in. You know what to do. Host a Facebook party, share with family and friends, and let us know your thoughts in the comment section. We may even ask a few questions. You know, I am excited about our guest today because we are fast approaching one of the most important and consequential moments in history. And it's not just the importance of the presidential election, it's important every single time there's an opportunity to vote. Think about that. So many people have been denied the right to vote. In 1868, the 14th Amendment granted equal rights of citizenship under the law to all persons born or naturalized in the United States, including slaves. But it wasn't equal for women and blacks. It was only 100 years ago that women got the right to vote with the ratification of the 19th Amendment. And still, we continue to fight. It wasn't until another 44 to 45 years that black women was able to vote with the strength and resilience of Fannie Lou Hamer and others. Today, the fight continues with attempt to roll back the rights we had as, um, with voter suppression, from decreasing the number of polling stations to interfering with the postal service and mail-in ballots, to sending out intimidating robocalls. Watch. Hi, this is Susan Sarah from Project 2 ballot request form for the upcoming, you know, general election in November. I requested it like maybe two weeks ago, right? But here's the thing, I almost threw it away because this is what it looks like. This looks like an ad for Donald Trump. This does not look like an absentee ballot request form because you have to unfold it, get through more there's the traffic cone himself, okay? You have to get through pages of what looks like Trump propaganda before you finally get to the form. What the f is this? How is this allowed? Why am I still asking that? Even the stuff that isn't allowed, he gets away with. So, you know, whatever. Check, check for these. I, I don't know. Wow, look at that, huh? Don't play in the hands of people feeding you false information. Don't surrender to cynics. Be informed. Know your source of information. Look out for bots and trolls. Thank God, you know, President Obama enacted the voting, voter suppression law in 20, um, 2010. The question for each of us, though, why? If your vote was not valuable, 
why are so many dedicated to stripping it away and silencing you? Your vote is your power. Believe it. I ask you to make sure you vote early. Make sure you're registered to vote. Vote on November 3rd or earlier if you can. Vote as if your life depends on it, because it does. All my guests today understand the power of bringing bridges communities together and the power of democracy in voting. Our first guest is no stranger to activism and educating young people. Take a look. Dr. Matthew Knowles has made his mission in life to motivate and educate. Founder of Music World Entertainment and Artist Management, he's produced more than 100 award-winning platinum and gold albums and is known for managing the solo careers of his two superstar daughters, Beyonce and Solange Knowles. As a distinguished lecturer at Cornell Fisk and Rice University, he exposes students to issues of race, equity, and inclusion. Dr. Knowles is also an author of several books, including the number one bestseller, The DNA of Achievers, 10 Traits of Highly Successful Professionals, Racism from the Eyes of a Child, and The Emancipation of Slaves Through Music. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Matthew Knowles. Hello, Dr. Knowles. How are you today? Oh, it's a long day, but I enjoy it. And uh, as the sun is setting here in San Diego, we're f fighting with the sun, but we'll, we'll, we'll work our way through it. Awesome. Awesome. So great to have you here. You know, um, I read a couple of your books and in um, The Emancipation of the Slave Through Music, um, you, you said that music has always been uh, a language used to communicate and liberate. From that example, how can you use that to educate young people for them to understand the power of voting? Well, you know, it's a very good question. Uh, we, we as, as Michelle Obama says, we have to vote like our lives are uh, at stake here, and it, it is. Uh, me growing up in Gaston, Alabama, a little small country town uh, in the 50s, uh, and myself at age 12 uh, actually protesting. Uh, and I've seen many, many men and women get beaten, uh, and myself, electric prodded, spit on, so we can have the right to vote. Uh, and it means really a lot to me. I have not missed the opportunity to vote. Uh, and there's a lot of confusion in the marketplace, uh, purpose confusion, uh, like the video we saw. People are confused. Where do I go? How do I vote? Uh, and that's purposely done. So we have to filter through all the noise, understand that the leadership today comes from entertainment. I think people forget this guy had a number one rated reality show. And in media, we understand totally what's going on. Uh, unfortunately, the general public does. I think they do, but um, I guess some people believe what they want to believe. You know, um, you're you're you know, it's it's America where they accept our music, they li like our culture, but they have some you know problems with our color, um, with our skin color. Your two daughters, Beyonce and Solange, has used their talent and platform to some degree of activism in a powerful way to influence and educate. In your book, Destiny's Child, you mentioned about your ex-wife, that she was the one that does fashion and all that. So we know where the girls got their fashion bit from. <laughs> but there are two things that you mentioned in your book that I want to draw your attention to. Is The first one was when um, you took um, Beyonce, I think, somewhere, and she hugged the homeless. And the second one was when she um, had not succeeded in, in one of her talent shows. She did not win the talent show. How do you think you were able to um, use it as a teaching moment for them? And, and now today it has influenced and impacted them in such a magnificent way that they're now on the world stage really doing activism like you, you, like you yeah. are. Well, you know, she was a young, young child um, and she loved, had a passion for music, but she was too young. She was singing. Uh, she didn't know the emotions uh, that, was needed uh, behind the song. So 
I came up with an idea of Deb. She was, we would go to all of the poor communities around Houston. Uh, and we literally went to a, a black community and just stopped, pulled the car, had some water, shared it. It was a hot, hot day. I purposely let the air conditioning, uh, turned it off, let the windows down. I wanted her to appreciate what she had that others didn't have. I wanted her to appreciate and have empathy what what others don't have and understand that when you sing the song, imagine, uh, what is that really saying and how to connect and understand other people. Uh, and, and the latter part, you know, I have a, a, a saying that it's from our mistakes, it's from our failures, that's an opportunity to grow, not a reason to quit. Uh, I've never known anyone get better from being better. Uh, they got better from making mistakes and taking risks. Uh, and I'm, I'm proud. My, you know, Solange and Beyonce, uh, they have set the example. I call it talk to do ratio. A lot of people do a lot of talking, but when you look at the percentage of doing, it's just not there. I'm about talk to do. Mm -hmm. I have to wonder sometime when I look at some of your work and, and yeah, you're, the multitask and all these different things that you're doing. I wonder, do you have you ever checked your ancestry? Do you have some Jamaican blood in you or something? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Knowles is from uh, from the Bahamas. Who who is from the Bahamas? Knowles, my last name. Oh, see, hey, I'm right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, we can't do one job. You know, we have ten jobs. Whether it's a garbage man or the doctor or the president of the United States, we can do all of that and in between. And that's why I appreciate what you have done with your young girls when they were small, you know, taking them to the inner city. That's where I started. So a lot of my work started in the inner city. Um, and here I live in Beverly Hills, but I brought them here too to my house so they could see. And I've gone to their houses and I've wine and dine with them. So it's a, it's a great way to, to, you know, to raise your kids and to see what they're doing now. You ought to be, you know, 100% proud. Um, how and what are some of the ways that you think celebrities can use their power? and influence, you know, your girls are already doing that, but what are some of the ways that you think you can influence other young people? Well, what, whatever the way that they do it, we have to do it quickly, uh, <laughs> really. I, I mean, this is, we only have days. We don't have months now to do this. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, a lot of uh, celebrities have huge social media numbers. Uh, that's certainly the, the uh, we're running out of time, so we have to take the tools that we have. And so we have to take the social media to reach the younger audience. You know, the, the younger audience probably are not listening to us. And, and I always laugh when I'm watching CNN. I'm like, you know, my, my students aren't look, watching CNN. So we have to go to where they are. And mm -hmm. that's taking it to social media. And we've got to really go strong and go hard because we only have a few days left here. Yes, you know, it's sometimes limited on the, some of the other social medias to how we can get these message across, but we're working on it. So we're going to, what we do here and, you know, we'd have it on Facebook, but we'll pass it on to uh, Instagram and make sure that, and I'm trying to get some of the young people to come join us. So um, the, speaking of that, um, uh, of celebrities, our next guest has thousands of followers. And after watching the debate between Trump and Biden a few nights ago, he seemed to have had an epiphany. Um, as to which way to vote. So let's hear what Rockstar has to say. Leon Rockstar Youngblood Jr. is a producer, songwriter, recording artist, and rapper. Known as Rockstar, he has written and produced songs for artists like Chris Brown, Post Malone, Usher, Kendrick Lamar, JLo, and many others. Showcasing in a variety of genres, Rockstar has been nominated for two Grammys. His own debut single, Confidence, premiered on Billboard in 2014. Rockstar is a superstar. Hey, Rockstar, how are you hey, today? I like that intro. I you had like to take it? that and repost hey. that on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Great. How are you? So glad you're here. Yeah, um, yeah me too. You know, we spoke right after the, um, the, the debate yeah, the, a few nights base. ago, and yeah. you told me that um, you got the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit or something. <laughs> yeah man it's just so I, share with yeah. your audience share with my audience briefly you know if you you can do it in a in a more succinct way 
what happened I mean, to you that you know you talked to me about and and what is your plan um i mean I, it was it was like it was weird because i was one of and this is going to now sound weird but i was one of the only um you know people who kind of was supporting trump through this situation just because you know i'm like i really i'm not really looking for um you know a puppet or you know somebody that i just felt like maybe this is one president that's pretty much like you know what i got my own opinion i got my own you know i i just like lead i just like people who are independent leaders like their own vibe self-made i'm like okay you know he's not just all caught up in the politics that's not his background this might work out and then um you know and biden he's somebody's grandfather's grandfather so i'm like you know i don't know i just don't know i, I don't know about either of them really i'm like I, I don't know but i think i'm gonna roll more on this side you know for whatever and then when the debate happened i'm like oh gosh i can't vote for trump it was crazy and then we got on the conversation because it's just like once he didn't really want to denounce the racist situation it's just like as a black man it's just like as a black successful young man who's had to go through so much between race this that the third i'm like i can't i can't vote for him and want him to represent me either it's like i'm just i've been at a loss for words and at this point in time it's like we got to vote and in my vote has now switched to Biden which I'm just it's it's just crazy it's just crazy well you know i i'm I'm, so I'm very i'm happy i'm I'm, ha I'm happy for that but you know and as a black man you 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 know you got your rights so we don't we're not monolithic right, right. so it's okay for you to vote democrat republican whatever it is that you want to vote right. but the thing that just boggles my mind and what i couldn't understand was the cost what cost and how many times number 45 has to show you who he unapologetically is. Maya Angelou right. so, says, when someone tells you who they are, the first time believe them. Right. This man has gone, for, you know, tell us black, brown and marginalized people where to go and who we are. And, you know, it, but there's also a saying where if you tell people the same thing over and over and over again, they'll believe it. So maybe that's what happened to you the other night. He kept right. saying yeah. the same thing and you finally got it. It's like you know what though, but I, I see Biden shaking hand with a a, a, a racist, uh, the the head of the KKK. I see, I see different. I, you kind of cleared up the the whole thing about what Hillary said, but Biden, Hillary, about you know us being um, super predators and I, it's certain things about Biden. I was like, okay, so I'm gonna go over here. It's another racist. Um, for me, the dem um, the Democrats, they they want to rise up, you know the taxes and, and and throw it into their you know programs and it's just a lot going on in terms of like the reason i i was rocking with the republicans versus the democrats but it's just like at the end of the day it's like biden is winning now in my vote for me just because of the the levels that trump sinks to in certain things that i've been like wait what so he's just sinking to new levels of low and i'm just like i can't I can't really support that. Not right now. That's well, just you not know, gonna work. Again, you know, I'm glad you came over, but I think he's he's sunk to that level of low a long time ago. Oh and, but I'm glad to know that your eyes are now open. Up. And I, I hope that you can go man. help to open up some other eyes of your man. colleague. Yeah. So, no, you tell me man. with that, what are you gonna do now? What well, are you gonna I mean, do now? How are you gonna use your voice and your music? Well, I mean, for me, I'm always my when I'm creating on whoever, whatever's going on, I'm it's all about frequency because I mean, obviously music is you can do free I like I have a PTSD frequency therapy program. Like I everything with me is frequencies. And the frequencies that the pre that the president and potent and, and 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 possible next president is throwing out, I'm just I'm kinda like for me, all I can do at this point is just you know, it's hard to sway because I'm not all the way solid on either party. You know what I'm saying? But for me, I'm just going to just say, listen, if you've studied it more than me, like you've like you're in, like you're you're into the every intricacy. Like my 
my situation is kind of more vague and then about I'm kind of more general with it. So I'm just telling people, you know, tap in, vote, figure it out um, and just go out and just, you know, be a part of the solution. But for me, just life wise, I'm just trying to create amazing frequencies. That's it. I'm just trying to create calm. I'm like I'm trying to create um, at this point in time with how chaotic the world is. I'm trying to create um, a waterfall frequencies. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like calming calming frequencies right now because it's crazy everything's just crazy but it goes back to you know being in the entertainment and your influence on young people so hopefully you will use your voice in your music to influence other people to look up but you you saw the 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 the, the video that we just showed how people yep. giving you false information well let me clear that up for you online that biden didn't say that that is some false nonsense that right. was made up and created <laughs> And is out there. So right. I think I would love to see it though, because right. I know that it was created. It was not real. And you know, you, you have computers and electronics can do all kinds of stuff. Right. So I'm going to bring um, Dr. Knowles and I think it's a perfect time to bring him back um, to talk about, you know, there are a lot of things that we talk about. Black people always say, I'm not going to vote for anybody because just, you know, similar to what Rockstar just said, they're all the same. But I don't mm -hmm. agree with you that, I mean, Trump and between Trump and Biden, the age difference is really not that much of a difference. I think right. it's maybe three or four years. Um, right. But, you know, black people always say, what are they doing for me? They're not doing anything for me, so I'm not going to vote. So I'll ask Dr. Nose to address that because you deal with students and, you know, all of that history. Why is it important that they know that all that that one vote that they have is precious and they should use it? Yeah. Well, you know, a no vote is is actually a vote for Trump, uh, just like a no vote for Hillary was a vote for Trump, uh, and, and we have to understand that. Um, you know, it's really really interesting to me that the people, the black people, that have the most to lose, are the ones who are out front, uh, and, and you know, most of the black people that are out front, we're good. We'll be okay regardless of who's the president. Right. It, it, but it's the caring about our people. Exactly. It's the empathy for our people that don't have. It's why you see people that have everything to lose out front. Beyonce lost a lot. People don't know how much she lost at the Super Bowl when she put her fist up for black power. She oh. lost sponsorships. She lost 20% of her audience. You know, people don't know what people who put their neck out, uh, put their lives at risk. Mm -hmm. We put our lives at risk doing what we're doing right now. And, and it really hurts me when I hear anybody black saying, this is not important because this will change your life. Absolutely. You know, when we talk about not having insurance or that you had coronavirus, although, you know, fortunately, and I'm happy you didn't get sick, but you're not going to be able to probably get insurance in the future. You're mm -hmm. not going to even be able to get life insurance in the future. You know, when we say, well, it's not important that I vote. Well, the major decisions made in America are made by judges. Mm -hmm. we, we wear a seatbelt every day because a judge said, that's what we're gonna do. So we really don't understand it's about knowledge uh, and, and empowering our young people to understand. Most people don't know about slavery or how that came about in Africa and the transatlantic journey. Most people, with, they don't even know that. They don't know our history. And so it's important that those of us that, that do and, and which is why I teach is to give back to young people so they have a sense of knowing, a sense of being. Look, when you get electric pride, most people don't know what racism looks like in the eye. That's when right. you get electric pride and beaten and spit on, see, I never went to a black school until my junior year of college and I grew up in Alabama. So I had to unfortunately be one of the first. And I said, unfortunately, because I was a kid a child, uh, and, and that's, people have really put a lot on the line for us to vote, a lot on the line. How dare us take it for granted? 
That's right. Thank you so much. That is such wise words. And I hope um, Rockstar can help to part that to his generation and to, to his um, young audience. So while Matthew and Rockstar both comes from the entertainment industry and use their influence to motivate and educate others, there are some people who do this for a living. Let's see the clip. Laura King, daughter of the late Rodney King, uses her voice to educate and empower people all over the world, asking, can't we all get along? Like her father said, after being beaten by Los Angeles police. Laura is a CEO and founder of the Rodney King Foundation, which works with the community to promote positive race relations and achieve social justice. Her foundation helps to bridge the divide within the community through scholarship program. Ladies and gentlemen, Laura King. Hi, Laura. Welcome to the show. I'm so happy to see you, and I'm so proud of the work that you're doing. Um, I remember where I was when all of this riot um, was going on, the civil unrest. Um, I just moved to California not too long, and I remember all of that. And I know it must be really trying for you going through all of this um, George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter. It must be quite um, you know, challenging for you. But how are you doing in terms of looking at the, you know, from back then with your dad, and I'm sure you were quite young then, um, to now? How, uh, how, how has things changed, if any? Or do you think? You know what? Um, right when I see change, it's like, boom, there's another video. So it's like, I want to believe, I want to um, accept the fact that we're getting better. However, every time you turn on the news, it's something else. So it's like, I have a yo-yo effect. It's like my emotions are back and forth. You know, one minute is like, okay, cool. This is happening. And then, um, you know, just boom. Again, we see something else. And it's like, it's just sad because the actions of them is like nonchalant, you know? And it's like, it's, it's kind of hurtful. It's kind of hurtful. So yeah. you have to be mentally strong <laughs> in order to uh, process it every day. It's, it's a lot, it's a lot yeah. to handle. That's awesome. Well, I hope you got some of this strength from your dad because he sure um, showed that, demonstrated that. Um, so um, let's go back to then what lesson would you say you learned um, from your father that, can, that you can share with the audience today to help bridge the gap and move forward and, you know, encouraging them to vote, that the importance of voting? You know, the media never portrayed him as who he was. He was a person that no matter what, he was smiling. He was always giving of himself till the day he passed away. And it's like, I, I looked at how he handled things the most challenging times. My sisters and myself would be upset, you know, and it's like he took a deep breath and handled things strongly. And to me, I always asked him, like, where did you get your strength from? And he would always say our ancestors. And, you know, what he went through was a major sacrifice. But again, he referenced the people that you know, all the things that happened to them. And, and that was nothing for him. And for me, that's like major strength, you know, as a black man, as a father, everything to be just thrown in the limelight, um, not expected, you know, and then to live a normal life, all in all, the way that he handled himself, I, I can only use his strength to keep me going. You know, it's like these moments that we have, you know, years ago, people died. As we spoke earlier, people died for this opportunity. So I, how dare us not to go and vote? Like, who are you not to? You know, I like to look at it as we're all part of the ocean. We're all drops of the ocean. And it's like, if we took ourselves out, there will be no water. And we know that water, we need water to survive. We need your vote. This is the first time I've ever spoken, you know, as far as political or anything of that. And I choose not to, but I think this is so important. And like you spoke, this is, you know, life or death for some of us. And it is. So it is. I think it's extremely important. And my dad will be proud. You know, he, he's not big on like political, but in this day and age, you know, where we are now, I, I have to speak up because who am I not to? You're doing a great job. I'm very proud of the work you're doing. You're doing a great job. And so um, next, I'm going to bring up a woman that knows everything about political organizing and getting young people involved from the ground up. Um, Muthoni, let's see, play the clip for me. Muthoni Wambu Kroll 
is the National Political and Organizing Director at the Democratic National Committee. She has been in the progressive politics for over two decades and is well accustomed to the warp speed of grassroots organizing. As the DNC National Political and Organizing Director, she leads a top-notch team of strategists and is a part of an intergenerational team that values diversity and the strength it brings to the work. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend, Muthoni. Muthoni, how are you? How are you? I am doing well. I'm so happy to see you. And I think you have a young man with you that you may want to introduce. I do. I have brought, I don't travel alone, Lorna. I, part of my strength is the team uh, that we have over at the Democratic National Committee. And in particular, uh, given the importance that the youth vote is going to always play, uh, and has always played, I would say, uh, but it hasn't always received the attention that it deserves uh, in our elections and in claiming their own power. I have brought with me Brother Kevin Lima, who is our Youth Outreach Director at the Democratic National Committee. Well, welcome, Kevin. Welcome. You know, Mithoni, you've been doing a fantastic job educating and training young people like Kevin to go out in the communities, get involved, um, from the ground up, registering people to vote, actually getting out vote, um, actually getting people to vote. What are some of the issues that your team are facing, especially as it pertains to registration now and voter suppression? Well, I mean, I think part of it is what we heard from our brother earlier, which is first and foremost, um, that we are up against a tremendous amount of disinformation and misinformation um, that is out there. And so in addition to all of the organizing that we have been doing, all of the, um, you know, and, and obviously I can talk about how that's been impacted since uh, COVID, but, you know, the good news is that the Democratic Party started very early on. Uh, when Tom Perez came in as the new chair, uh, our first Hispanic chair, I would like to add, uh, in the history of the Democratic Party uh, and took over in 2016 after, uh, as a party, we had to learn a lot of hard lessons and, you know, faced a devastating uh, defeat uh, that again, um, you know, once everything was examined and we looked at the 2016 elections, what we know is that disinformation and misinformation had played a successful role in the elections uh, at that time uh, of Donald Trump. And now, um, what we have had to do was what Joe Biden is doing, and that is what, or what he will do when he's elected, build back better. Uh, and we came in and really uh, changed our technology, our security, but also we're engaging differently. We see bringing good information and being an information resource to battle the disinformation as a part of our organizing. And I think that uh, Kevin can share uh, more even about how important that has been around our youth engagement, because look, so many of our communities live online. And what Senate intelligence reports have told us are that particularly for the black community. So when I hear, you know, this brother's like some of the things that you've already called out, Lorna, as being false. Well, that's because we have been showered with falsehoods. We are used to being invisible people, I think, in terms of seeing our power. And it doesn't necessarily occur to folks that Russia would see us as a powerful tool to somehow being able to take down Hillary Clinton and to help Donald Trump ascend to the presidency. But in fact, that is exactly what happened. And so as a party, what we had to do was recalibrate in a tremendous way and in a way that in particular began to look at where a lot of our people are. And as I said, that is why so much of our organizing, as we know now, has to had to expand uh, to really take into account the online organizing side of things. That's that's great. That's awesome. I know. Um, and um, in full disclosure, um, I work with Mithoni at the DNC as the assistant treasurer, and I know she does fabulous work. And um, Kevin? Um, what do you have for us? Um, how are you able, what I call, I call it the secret sauce, but you don't like the secret sauce. So what do you want to yeah. call it? So, uh, you know, when 
when the primary was happening, we noticed that there was going to be an enthusiasm gap, right? And we have seen this enthusiasm gap after March um, when Bernie Sanders lost the primary. And a lot of us in the youth space were asking the question, all right, how are we going to get young people motivated to vote for Joe Biden? In the past, we've used the we've said Trump is going to be running against Joe Biden. This is going to, you know, you got to vote because you're, you got to vote against Trump. You got to vote uh, because Trump is coming into office. It did not resonate a lot with young un and enthusiastic people. They, there's still a lot of uh, qualms with why they didn't want to vote. And so one thing that we began to notice is that young people are not, are voting based off of policy. Young people are turning out because of policy. And when we look at this, what's, what's currently at stake, it's progressive policy versus four years of what we've already seen as a failed administration. And so what the framing is now is, hey, you're not voting for just Joe Biden. You're not voting for just Kamala Harris. You're voting for progressive Democrats. You're voting for a group of Democrats all across the country who are going to come to this team and who are and he's building out a team that is going to tackle all of these policies that young people care about. Right now, the team that Trump has built around him includes people like Scott Pruitt, who are, you know, he's the EPA uh, director. He doesn't believe in climate change. Automatically, we know what the four years ahead of us will look like if we vote for Donald Trump again. However, when you have a, a group like, you know, AOC and Bernie Sanders and, you know, uh, the, uh, the founder of Sunrise Movement coming on board uh, and being um, people who are part of a task force that are giving us recommendations for policy, he's building out a team. And, and this is who we're voting for, this Democratic team uh, of progressive politics. And this will be the most progressive uh, you know, policy-based plan that will come into effect if we vote for Biden. And I think because of that misinformation, the disinformation campaign, we don't really get to see that. And so it's really up to a lot of the influencers and a lot of us, include all three of us and everyone who was on this call, to show, hey, this is how it's going to affect us on the policy. This is how it's going to affect us just on our day-to-day -day lives, right? Great. But we do have a team. Nice job, but I'm also, I'm going to ask you to bring Dr. Knowles back into this conversation and um, Rockstar, if he's, if he's still there. Um, yeah, one of the things you talked about, um, I, like, I like your energy and I like your spunk and I like where you're going, but I also want you to realize as a young person, you should be doing it for you, for something that for you, you may want to do it, yes, on behalf of the respect for your ancestors, but you want to make sure that the person that you're voting for has your values. And we all are not going to have the same values. I may not agree with you on the same thing, the same thing you're going to find with your young people that you're working with. They may not all agree, but it doesn't mean that they're wrong. You have different values. And then, so I'm going to throw this at you, Kevin, and I'm going to ask you, what if people say, you know, these young people, they just want everything free. They don't want to pay for anything. They just want socialism. What are you going to tell, what are you, what are you saying to the people who are more middle of the road that you want to attract? Because the Democratic Party or the all parties should be, you know, open to everybody. So yeah. you want to make sure that whatever your message is, it resonates with you. But the most important thing that we're advocating today is to make sure that you vote. Look at this. <laughs> I love it. This yes. is um, the black as um, the Black Business Association of LA <laughs> sent me these, so I have to I have to wear them. So let me say hi to the president, <laughs> CEO, that I'm wearing your mask. It is important to vote. So yes, yeah. uh, you, you're you're doing a good job, and I'm sure. Pretty much soon, you may be the president of the United States one of these days. Oh, no. <laughs> no Don't no, say that yet. You're, you're on the I, I right track. I would go back to that point of like, you're right. How does this affect me? And I think that's what, you know, when, and not just me, but like you as a person, right? And, and it goes back to what we're seeing, this trend of why young people are turning out in higher rates to vote this year. 
um, it's because of something that I just mentioned, that young people are turning out because of policy. And once we begin looking at policy affects every single part of our lives, and, and it affects us in different ways. And then you realize, oh, local policy affects us in a specific manner. Okay, maybe if I'm a young person, I should go run for office in my local town because it's going to affect more of what's happening at the local level. Policy affects us at the national, at the state level. It affects us at the national level, and it's just what is resonating right now with, you know, this is uh, this is what's it affects all of us. And so once we know what's at stake, you know, you're going to hear tonight in about 30 minutes exactly questions about policy, and you're going to see that Donald Trump is against most of progressive values. Donald Trump is against most Latinos. Donald Trump is against African Americans. Donald Trump couldn't even stand up in the last debate to to say that he doesn't support, you know, white supremacy. And it, it's it's just a kind of clear at this point, you know. Yeah. You know, there um as actually when he was running, he said he wasn't um, seeking out the educated. He was seeking out the uneducated. So that's what he catered to a lot of the uneducated. But we know why the educated vote for him. It's what they can get and what's in it for them like the but I don't want to get into the political part right now because I really just want to make sure people understand their right to vote and the importance of voting and whatever you decide to do, you got to open your eyes and you got to see, you got to make sure your information is coming from the right place and, and uh, so that you can make an informed decision. In terms of um, voter suppression is something too with that though. You know, the problem here though, I think that what Brother Rockstar was saying earlier was really important. Um, that not enough people understand their choices between these two human beings. And when we are saying on the one hand, you got to find someone who aligns with your values, then I want to be able to tell you that as a New Yorker, what this guy is running is the three cup hustle. And what is happening right now with the lies that he has told that replace the other lies, it all sort of moves around. So the, even the impression that he was, is self-made is horrifying, given what we know about how much money he inherited and how little he's actually had to lift a finger in his life and how all along he has cheated every step of the way. My seven-year-old was talking about the fact that this guy has never, he questioned whether he actually even finished college himself. So, you know, and the fact that our kids are absorbing this in this way, I mean, that will make them magnificent. I wasn't that kid. Um, but, you know, on the other hand, politics right now are so in their face because it's traumatizing. They're sitting here trapped inside. Uh, they are trapped in our political decisions. So we have a huge responsibility right now to really take the time to know the difference that Joe Biden, who came up in Scranton, Pennsylvania, uh, you know, with the dad who was kind of barely making ends meet. Uh, and yeah, he made it to the U.S. Senate, but it was not the kind of like, you know, coast ride that Donald Trump has had in his life where he pressured his wealthy father, in fact, to change his will. And there's why his whole family is running all these lawsuits. So the, the, the story goes on and on, but I want to make sure to point that out because we are a community particularly when we're talking about the black community and immigrant communities that uh, we work a lot of jobs, as you said. I come from a half Kenyan household. My mother's from the South side of Chicago, all the way together, everybody worked. And you know, I understand why that message resonates, but I'm trying to say like, this cat didn't work. He like, it was the opposite of work. And he made everybody else do the work. And he's continued to do that. We're gonna see that with Mike Pence tonight. Here's a guy who was tasked to be the head of the coronavirus uh, task force. And the minute that the president saw that he was take, you know, doing these, um, doing the press conferences, he started to edge in, needed to be on the stage, and then sort of blew the whole thing up. And we are all sitting here still inside of a pandemic that has absolutely no plan and where our people are dying at record numbers. We're surging again. And we're in the middle of making one of the most important decisions that any of us is probably going to have to make uh, in our lifetimes. And so I did want to make sure to just share that like insight.
because that's part of what we've got to do. That's what Kevin and I do day in and day out is try to have these kinds of conversations. This is a big country. I call it a country of 50 countries, not 50 states. And we have a lot of different dynamics when we're going into different communities that we need to address and speak to directly. Yeah, um, I, 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 Rock, I, Rockstar, I was gonna go to you and see. Yeah, yeah I, I, actually, I actually appreciate what she said. The, the, the biggest problem with us just young and in the mix people is social media is taking up 99.999% of our time. So it's like, and especially staying home bored, you know, doing whatever it is. So like in the situation, nobody really understands. I'm around every type of artist, even artists don't understand. I'm around, you know, artists, I'm around uh, um, um, models, actors, this, that, the third, other producers, other, just people that hold extreme just power in, uh, 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 in terms of influence. And it's just like, it's just like, nobody knows. I Like, we don't know why we should vote for Trump or why we should vote for Biden. So we have to stick to the things that are in the front of everything. So like the argument, we're just like people who have never really tapped in, but are like listening on social media. So now they're watching it. They tap in and they're like, okay, so now it's two guys arguing. Whoever wins this argument, I think I'm going to go that way. But in, 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 or, or they'll hear points. Like for me, like a reason I was voting for Trump at first was because I'm like, okay, he doesn't support abortion. You know what I'm saying? As, as a Christian and just God fearing, I, I don't, I don't support abortion. So therefore that was like, okay, cool. That, that makes sense. Biden supports abortion. All right. So that's a different situation. Okay. So let, let me figure out what else it is. Okay. So I'm, we're finding little points, like whatever we can stick to. I, nobody knows as a, for us, like why? And then even in their argument, like Trump is clearly stating like, okay, Biden, you've been in office, you've been in around here doing this stuff for how many years and what's changed now? And why should we let you do like, what's going to change? You've been in office all this time. Why haven't you changed anything since you've been in office for 40 years? So like watching that from the outside in, I'm like, yeah, why haven't you done anything or what? Why don't I know you for anything on that tip or like maybe we're just uneducated to what biden has done over these years mm -hmm. but nothing has maybe been so dramatic to where we're like oh yeah Biden. like no like for us it was a no-brainer with obama because clearly a minority we're gonna run with that even if we didn't know what it was but in terms of biden versus trump it's very like why are we voting for biden again uh versus trump i'm not somebody who's like oh i'm a super you know, Biden support or Trump, but in just in the general situation, why people are running into problems is because nobody understands why they should vote for either party or why they shouldn't. For us, it's like Trump, was he, is he a racist? Like, it's just like, we're trying to figure it out because he's, he hangs with, you know, Kanye's this, from what we're looking at, he, he, he's been around you know, er, you know, different people forever. And, and we don't know Biden like that, just from the outside looking at only politics. The, the, the thing about it is people aren't really that into politics to be, you know, making these type of decisions because the politicians only show up this heavy at this point in, you know, this part of the year. And then now it's a big thing in the social media. But the thing is, nobody understands who to vote for. Like, we really honestly, clearly don't know who to vote for. And I'm starting to feel crazy because I'm like, Everybody's like, yo, why are you voting for Trump? And I'm like, well, why are you voting for Biden? I, I don't I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Like, I really honestly yeah. don't understand. It's not clear. And it's not clear why anybody should vote for, for Biden. Or I know I know we saying, oh, it's progressive policies. And, you know, he's going to be on that side and Trump ain't on that side. But then it's like, it's just, it's like, what are we voting? I, yeah. I, it's just like more like I, it's just it, it's just confusing. It's okay, like, well, I don't understand. You know, I am going to ask um, um, Dr. Knowles to see if he could jump in because I think something is missing here. I could go on and Ooh. on. There are several points that that you talked about that I would love to touch on uh, briefly. Um, what Biden has done, um, yes, it's because you haven't heard or you haven't done your homework. And what you need to do is do some of your homework. And that's what but Kevin talked about. The world is not going to do their homework. Like young right. dudes so, are not so we got to figure out a way to bring it to you. So we, somebody got it. Somebody has to be somebody responsible needs a way to, to bring it. it in layman's term to the rest of the world. Oh, okay. And another thing is, oh, he's, is he gone? But the abortion issue. Um, I, I don't know for sure that to say that Biden is for abortion. 
Biden is for women's reproductive right. And a woman has the right to choose. It's not because somebody is um, pro-abortion. It's a woman who has the intellect and the ability to make decision for herself, not a bunch of old white men and the courts deciding for them. So that's what it's all about. That's what we believe in as human, um, woman's right to choose, not necessarily abortion. So that's not a good um, right thing. Um, more attraction. So I'm saying I think we need to do something to make it more attractive and more and to educate people more to, to vote. Um, Dr. Knowles, since you deal a lot in the education world, is there anything you would like to that? How can we, and you're also in the entertainment world, how can we bring these two together to educate young people um, to make it more, you know, more informational? Uh, uh, again, we only, got, we only have days to do this. Uh, we got to remember the timeline. You know, this is real. I keep, I keep very simple, very real. Uh, I respect everybody's perspective, even if I disagree. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm an adult. I don't get emotional. I, I don't agree with some of the perspectives that I heard. And then there's many I do agree with. This is real simple. If you think life for you has been better over the last four years, financially better, or looking at the coronavirus, unemployment, whatever, if you, life is better for you, maybe, maybe you don't vote. But life is good. But I don't know about for you, but life had been good for me like it was uh, the, the previous four years. I, didn't, I wasn't scared to go out of my house six years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm scared to go out of my house today. So, I mean, it's a simple question. Is life better for you over these last four years? Then stay, stay with Trump if life is better for you. If life is not as better, better for you, then maybe you want to change. Laura, do you um, want to add something? I have one other thing. I listen to everybody. I didn't step on nobody. I just need a minute here. This is about, for me, what's the difference between the two? One mm. is a racist and one is not. Yeah. It's real simple. I mean, if you want to vote for a racist, vote for Trump. I don't know. That's, that, right. To me, that's, that's the hey. most important thing here. I'm a black man. I, I, <laughs> I don't want to get all into the other stuff. I want to keep it real simple. If life is better, mm -hmm. and then if you don't think this guy is a racist, uh, I, I, you know, and, and we have to be held accountable. He's here because we didn't vote four years ago. Yeah, because the same scam, because somebody, you know, and it's so interesting how the black votes and are being targeted. The black and brown votes are the ones that are targeted because the power in our vote, and that's what I, we, I think we need to help young people to understand, the power in their vote. If it wasn't so good, they wouldn't want to take it away from you. So use it. Don't let it sit there. Use it because somebody else will use it for you. Go ahead. I did want to jump in here. I did have something to say. Um, for no other reason but the fact that, you know, when the riots happened this time, it was like, for me, it was personal because it was like when people are killed, that's not a sense of urgency. But the fact that merchandise and people and, and forgive me, because I know that, you know, owning a business, I know that people came from different countries and they, you know, put whatever in to get this business. However, the fact that they didn't make people's lives a sense of urgency like they did um, when they were bringing in, you know, soldiers to stop everything. To me, that's a disappointment. And I feel like he should have spoke up and that was never important to him and we watched on national tv as well as our kids this man you know at the end of the day he was nonchalant about taking a black man's life on national tv and for me that's that's real personal as a human being never mind he's a black man as a human being but it was nonchalant because he was a black man so to me the fact that he's a president and he didn't speak on that that speaks volumes to me that's that's Absolutely. very that's sick and that's we're, we're, how I, I don't speak politically, but I'm speaking today because it needs to be done. I guess a lot of people are getting political who weren't. So it's, it's a good thing. Uh, it's almost time to wrap up. Anything, anybody have anything burning? We have to continue this conversation because it's really good. And I think it's worthwhile, but we're just running out of time. Anybody have any burning well, last minute thing? Lana, I think this is it, right? I mean, uh, again, <sighs> 
political conversations are important ones to have. And part of what we have been doing and part of what, you know, was the big job in front of us uh, in a place that is so big is to figure out how are we going to organize and spread out and have as many conversations as we can in as many different spaces as we can. And that's why I have a team of 20. I have, I started and I made my most important hires, the ones, the communities that I feel have been touched the least, particularly by Democrats uh, in recent years. I hired a rural director early on. I hired our faith director early on. I hired our Native American political director early on. And this sister was an elected and come from uh, one of the uh, more organized tribes. And so really has brought a whole different dimension to our work. So, you know, we are, um, I, we still have a lot of miles to go um, to make sure that we are doing the work the way it needs to be and keeping up with how people get information. But a lot of this also lies with us. You know, I, everybody on here is, has, uh, you know, is entrepreneurial in, in some manner and extremely many of you successful uh, in having done that. Um, we need to treat the power and the decision-making that you put towards businesses into our politics uh, because this government and this environment this vibe that you know we need to help people to uh, achieve because they're so stressed out is the result of political decisions. Families getting separated, kids who cannot eat, the 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 health care that folks cannot afford, and that Republicans are literally trying to take away in the middle of a pandemic. That's the priority. Yeah, these That's are the things that we have to look at, and as brown people. We don't think in a singular mode. We are village people. And I will always claim that for us, no matter how much money we make. I think that daddy knows, we would call him Baba knows where I am from, had it exactly right around the way that he took the girls around, all of that. But like, sometimes we got to recreate village in a whole different way. This is not the original space. Right. Uh, and that's why conversations and organizing need to help do that. Because this is often how people, you know, this is how we make these collective decisions about our future and who's going to do the best job for us. All uh, right. With me. Yeah. You okay, know, Ms. Tony. Uh, I guess we could go on and on, but yeah. we have to wrap it up. Uh, yeah. We just have to do it again. We'll bring you back. Um, we're going to try to do something else, uh, a few more of these before the um, election. So I want to talk, thank each and every one of you for coming today and for inspiring us. And I hope we were able to get through to some young people. Um, Dr. Knowles, thank you for inspiring us and thank you for being a leader, uh, one that we can look up to. And I'm sure that we will be a better person today just from hearing a few words that you have to inspire us with. Um, Laura, keep on doing what you're doing, carrying on your daddy's legacy. I am so proud of you. Rockstar. Let's go do it, man. Let's go get all your friends and let's mm -hmm. educate. Let's help let's me to educate it. you and to educate your friends so we can make informed decisions please, because that's what we need to do. do. I Kevin, that. I know you're going to be president one of these days. And you, remember, you heard it here first. Um, Muthoni, <laughs> thank you for all that you're doing. A beautiful, handsome little man there. And I just want to um, thank all of you for coming. And um, I'm going to break down just in closing, wrap it up some of the reasons why it's important, again, that young people vote. This evening, we talked about the importance of voting. I hope you understand that your vote is your power, and power is in numbers. In the midst of COVID protest and all the chaos in our country and around the world, we must take this right that our ancestors fought for and vote. Voting means we make decisions that impact our communities, our state, our nation, our lives. From the state attorney making prosecutorial decision to state legislators that are drawing the maps that determine whether or not we are accurately represented. Voting matters. From how much funding communities get to school, parks, recreation, to the amount of taxes you pay, to criminal justice reform, 
to having any kind of disaster in your community and the length of time it takes to get it remedied. To those who go to jail and for what? And determine how much time you spend for the crime. Voting matters. Everything that happens in our lives depend on political process and you are paying for it. So participate and vote. Stay informed and look out for bots and trolls. Don't believe everything you hear. Check your registration status, IWillVote.com. Vote early, bring a friend. Again, thanks to all of my viewers for tuning in today. See you next time on the next virtual town hall. Girl Tribe, Letter to Our Girls, Wednesday, October 24th at 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Remember, when we all vote, we all win. Again, thank you very much. Good night and God bless.